sense. Right. Somehow we have this idea. If I if I see something I can't afford, I know I should not steal it. I'm a married man. If I see a woman I'm not married to, I know I should not uh, make a pass at her. Uh, if I have someone I don't like, I know that I should have hit him or, or kill him or something. Somehow when it comes to homosexuality, we think if that's what you want to do, do it. I was like, what? But let me be clear. Let me be clear. I think I love the homosexuals. Yeah, I love homosexuals. And, and, and you should not hate homosexuals. Because just like God says homosexuality is wrong, He says hatred is wrong. So I don't hate homosexuals, and please don't take anything I say to think that, that you ought to hate them, or to justify your hate. But you know, you can say someone's wrong and not hate them. See, this is another problem. If you say, but almost, like if you tell a friend who gets drunk a lot, if you have a, a friend who gets drunk a lot, and you say to him, hey, you really shouldn't do that. You're ruining your life. He doesn't say, oh, you must hate me. If you have friends who's, who's doing drugs, try and them out, he doesn't, he doesn't say, oh, you must hate me. If you have a friend who steals, you try and encourage him not to. He doesn't say, you must hate me. But when it comes to homosexuality, if you challenge him and say, don't do it, oh, you must hate me. No way. Who am I condemn? I don't condemn you. And you know what? Even if I did, even if I did, I'm just a man. If I, even if I did say to you, hey, go to hell. Even if I did say that, big deal, I'm just a man. But if God says it to you, you better tremble. You better tremble with God saying. What I'm telling you is from the Bible. The Bible, Jesus Christ, did not come into this world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Hey, most of you are like 20, 21, 22 years old. It's not too late. You can come to Christ. You can come to Him now. It doesn't matter how bad you've been, how far away, how condemned you might feel. You can come to Jesus now. No, I'm not here condemning, but I am warning. There's a difference. I'm warning that if you don't come to Jesus Christ, you will be condemned on the judgment day. So, say I didn't answer your question. What did I miss? My question was, being gay, I'm not attracted to men. I don't plan on marrying one, regardless of whether or not I marry a woman. I don't have a are you allowed to have a friend who's a female? Is that a question? No, you should not have that with another woman. Yes, you can. Well, well you can have it with... You can have whoever you want. All right. All right. All right. Well, you raise a, a kind of a bigger question than that. Or there's maybe a, a presupposition or, or maybe an assumption you have that I would disagree on a bit more fundamental level. Uh, I don't want to say this. Sarah. Uh, I don't want to get a reaction out of it. So I'm trying to think of a very diplomatic way to say this. You can say it however you want. I'm going to try to home after this. Yeah. All right. How do I say this? Um, if you're gay now, you don't have to stay gay. So what do you work. I have a word. If it's a choice, you're considering it, man. I've heard priesthood is like a closet with stained glass windows. Is that right? You don't have to stay gay. 
so when did you decide to do a train? How did I answer that? Oh, that was good. Yeah. You, you got your legs. You, you got sure your legs. You, you don't have to stay gay. Uh, so you don't have to stay straight, right? Well, technically, correct. Technically, if I wanted, I could go just eat it. Start having gay sex. So you're considered. If it's a choice, you're considered. The way you're off stage, you can get it. I agree with you that if you went out and had, you know, found some guy to have sex with, that doesn't make you heterosexual. It doesn't mean you'd like him. You might be repulsed by him. You might find him sick of him. But, but see here, you know, I know you guys want to laugh and mock it. You know, I don't know why you guys find it so easy to make fun of gay situations. I think it's a very serious issue. And, uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to listen laughter or mocking of either my side or her side. Okay. What I'd say is this: sexual desires are part of the way God has made us. Okay. Sexual desires are part of our humanity. We're made by God, God's image. We, we, and, and sexual desire is something that develops in life. Usually, what around you know adolescence or so forth, puberty and so so forth. Some people develop normal and appropriate sexual desires. Other people do not. Some people, for instance, and I don't want to offend you here. Okay, let me finish. Do you agree that there are some inappropriate sexual desires out there? Anyone disagree with you? Yes. Pedophilia would be one. If, if you want to have sex with kids, that is a, that is a, well, how do you want to say it? Inappropriate, twisted, wrong behavior. Say that I want children to be my turn on. That would be wrong. I compare it to what the Bible tells me. The Bible is our source of understanding about Jesus. And so, if, if I tell you, if I tell you something about Jesus, and it lines up with the Bible, then that's a good source of information. If I tell you something about Jesus that doesn't line up with the Bible, I'm, it's not a good source of information. Because what we know about Jesus comes from the Bible. So, if you're telling me, you're, if you're telling me that you're living in sin, when condemning all these people for something they believe in, for something that they think is right. And our God accepts them no matter what. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Every day, God accepting people no matter what. Where, where do you get that in the Bible? The entire Bible. The entire Bible. What are you talking about? He's enjoying loving and God loving people. All right? God's not going to create something he doesn't love. He created all of us according to your Bible. And he created all of us and loved all of us. It doesn't matter what the fuck we choose because he's going to love us anyway. Yourself, you? I do. I do. Well, I consider myself agnostic. 
I'm not quite Christian and agnostic. Uh, are you a vegan? Do you think there's a difference? Do you have antibodies inside of your body killing bacteria? Is the word love and the word acceptance, are those synonyms? Keep the dream alive. So, like, uh, Well, I would say that I would endeavor to love him, but I do not accept him. I think he should have been killed, thrown in jail, captured, what happened. I think, I think what was done to him was right, but still we're called to love him. Uh, See, the Bible teaches God loves, God's love is unconditional. But God's forgiveness is conditional. There's a difference. God's love is unconditional. God's forgiveness is conditional. And it's conditional upon faith in Jesus Christ. It's conditional upon uh, repentance and faith. I'm really attracted to you right now. Are you going to be talking to you, Tyler? Well, restrain your face. Guy is not a question for you. Your primal instinct tells me otherwise. You will be sorry, Tyler. And all of us have free will. Heather, you're asking like an awesome question. I hope everybody here heard. Someone has a question. Well, I'm going to answer Heather. I'm, you've had your hand up a while. I'm going to get him out. Let me stay with Heather and we'll be back. An arm workout. Uh, did God create? Yes. Does that mean everything about us is good and right? No. In fact, we all sin. We all done things we know to be wrong. Every single one of us. Does God? Why, therefore, does God say repent if He gave us free will? See, free will is this. Free will is God saying, "Go that. Don't go that way. That's the wrong way, and there's a consequence." Go that way, that's the right way, and there's a reward. Now make up your mind. Well, the truth is, we've all gone the wrong way. And God gives us the opportunity to repent and come back the right way, get on the right path. Because if you stay on the wrong path, it's got consequences on earth, it's got consequences in eternity. Because God... Are you suggesting homosexuality is a choice? Can I answer that? Absolutely. Yes, yes you can. I would love you. Yes, you can. Yeah. All right, let me I clarify. Is it yes or no? Question. Well, no, it's not. It's not yes or no. No. Because you got to find homosexuality. And what you're talking about is this. Can you choose who you find attractive? I didn't choose you. <laughs> can you choose who you find to be attractive? The answer is, maybe, maybe not. I'll acknowledge that some people, some people, they are attracted to someone and it's not a choice. They're just attracted. But you can choose whether or not you act on it. You can choose what you do about it. I'm a married man. Suppose I find, uh, suppose I find a young lady to be attracted. I choose whether or not to act on it. I choose whether or not to initiate her talk to her, try and ask her out. I'm sorry, I have trouble hearing you. Excuse me, I'm having trouble hearing you. Just one second. I'm having trouble hearing you. Excuse me. Well, I was here first. <laughs> Actually, you guys are here like about 100. See, some of these guys, 
just want to force their way upon us. I don't want to see one person here by I'm not about to fight. Okay, we're going to take over. Look out, everybody. I'm trying to answer him. A little louder, please. I attend a Presbyterian church. Everybody there except me, as well as the other members of the homosexual community. And I... Uh, 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 everyone there what? Everyone there except me, as well as the other members of the homosexual community. Are we all burning in hell? Are those pastors burning in hell? Well, if, if your pastor... Um, does your pastor honor the Bible? What? Does your pastor believe the Bible? Uh, his perception of the Bible, which is quite different than yours, but yes, he does. Well, then I'd say he's going to be answerable to God. And, and if my perception of the Bible is wrong, I'll be answerable to God. I'm not saying your perception is wrong. I'm saying that you have a perception but, but here's the thing. different than his. I believe in over yours because I respect him. Well, I say again, if, it, if in fact he's right and I'm wrong, I'm going to be in big trouble, because I will have been preaching something false. On the other hand, if, if I'm right, and he's wrong, then yes, he'll be uh, in big trouble with God. Because he'll have been a false teacher. So the question is, not am I right or is he right, the question is, what does the Bible say? And we're not free to just make it say whatever we want it to say. No, we're not. Some people think some people think we have the right to just make the Bible say whatever we want to say. Right, you get up here and say as if this is what God's intentions were, this is what Jesus' intentions were. You can't discern what people's messages were from a text that's that old. I believe you can. I can't hear you. I believe you can. I can't hear you. All right, well then let, let, let me talk to you. Okay, well then you have to tell me why. Alright, well, I'll talk. Who is this guy? Hank. Hank. See, the Bible, you're next. The Bible. Okay. The Bible. You can go to the Bible if you want and twist it. Make it say whatever you want it to say. Destroy it. Lie about it. But you will really count to God if you do that. Because this is His Word. This is His Word. I'm sorry I'm not listening to this group. Go ahead. There is a difference between interpreting the Bible and twisting it. You're right. I interpret it. it sounds like you guys twist it. Go ahead. Okay, guys. <laughs>